school lesson a while back, and it's from a book called Our High Calling, which is a daily devotional, and it is uh, from March the 20th, and it's Give No Place to Temptation. This is one of the key tools you need in your toolbox as you walk the Christian life. If you have not been doing this, Satan has had a way to get advantage of you. So let's look at what this piece of advice says. Do not, for a moment, acknowledge Satan's temptations as being in harmony with your own mind. <gasps> you get a temptation. You get a thought that comes through your mind. And you say, yeah, that's me. That's the way I am. I'm just, I always do this, and I always will do this. And I, she says, you got to figure out, uh, if you're in psychology or psychiatric uh, care and you hear voices, what do they call you? Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is a true disease, and I'm not making fun of schizophrenia. But let's not forget that the Holy Spirit has promised to lead us and guide us. How does God do that? It's a still, small, quiet voice. It whispers in our hearts. I mean, we used to read these Uncle Arthur bedtime stories, and one of them, I think, had a little devil on one shoulder and a little angel on the other story, other shoulder. Folks, that's not too far from the truth, okay? If you have to visualize it like that. And so Satan, the little devil, is saying, is saying, yeah, that's who you are. You're a sinner. You've done it once, you've done it twice, and you're going to do it till the day you die. And why don't you do it some more? Because you know you already feel guilty about it, so you might as well just go ahead and do it anyway. And everybody, and and then afterwards he says, "Aha! You did it. Yep. You are no good, no lousy person. You did it." So he's there to urge you into it. He's there to condemn you after you do it. And what what Ellen White is pointing out is this wonderful truth that she figured out. Don't acknowledge Satan's temptations as being in harmony with your own mind. Don't think that that's who you are. If you've been born again, you're a new creature in Christ. All things have become new, and all the old things have passed away. You've been renewed by the knowledge of His Word in your mind. You're somebody else than that. Amen? Amen? Amen. Are you a new creature in Christ? Or Amen. Not? Yes. yes. Somebody say, with me together, I am a new creature in Christ. I am a new creature in Christ. So she says, turn from them as you would from the adversary himself. Those thoughts. Just as if the devil was standing there himself. Satan's work is to discourage the soul. Christ's work is to inspire the heart with faith and hope. Satan seeks to unsettle our confidence. He tells us that our hopes are built upon false premises rather than upon the sure, immutable word of him who cannot lie. Because if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. <coughs> If you would read for us uh, Galatians 2, verses 19 through 20, Ray, that would be great. That I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And no. the life... Oh, I'm sorry. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. This is another Amen. crucial verse. But I found this illustration on the web. First of all, Christ died for me. And second of all, you have to understand these two great facts, that you died with him. Amen. If you haven't died with him, you haven't experienced the born-again experience. But not only did Christ die for me personally, and you see the outline of Christ on the cross, and then me dying, because we didn't get to really die, but we died because we recognized that Christ died for us. And he died for us because we're sinners. Yeah. So he not only died for me personally, but he died for all humanity. He took all humanity with him to the cross. Amen. So this one says, I have been crucified with Christ. You see Christ there, and there's the person. But Christ went to the grave, and Christ <laughs> rose from the dead grave, and now by the power of the Holy Spirit, Christ lives in me. Amen? Amen. Amen. How are we continually with him? Because this is about being continually with us. How does this actually work? Well, when you're living for self, before this, you almost have that black heart, you see. And when you decide, or when God calls you, and you begin to accept what he's already done through Jesus, then you accept that you deserve that death. You don't boast about your works anymore. You say, Amen. I deserve to be dead. 
I, I, am, I vote with God. I can vote with the devil. The devil says, you know, I'm a rock and no good sinner. And I say, you're right. But then I say, but Jesus died on the cross for me. And he was buried. And then we are buried with Christ. And then we're raised as a new person in Christ. And the scriptures in Romans 6 talk to us about that. And um, Ray, I'm going to read this one. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? And then verse 3. For do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his what? Into his death. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, Certainly, we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. So if we want to be continually with him, we've got to recognize that we are dead, dead uh, that we die daily, Paul said. And if we are dying daily, then we're going to be raised again daily to walk in newness of life. We don't, we don't have a contest that says, um, who who can be the most dead to self? Well, like I'm more dead to self than you are. Well, no, I'm more dead to self than you are. I mean, we can't have that conversation, can we? We, we can't, uh, can't say to ourselves, well, um, if I humiliate myself in this way or I do this thing, then God will know that I really don't care about myself. It's not about being dead. It's about being alive in Christ. Amen. It's about being alive in Christ. So the life that he lives, Amen. he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because we've got work to do. Amen. We've got to be alive in Christ Jesus our Lord. I would like to just finish up with, well, I got, I've got some more, so we'll be okay. You all are okay, right? Yeah. Yep. All right. Living for self, crucified with Christ, <coughs> buried with Christ, raised as a new person in Christ. In the Seventh Day Adventist Church, we practice baptism, baptism by immersion. We get all wet, we go under the water, we can't breathe. And how many of you like to breathe underwater? No. Now we hold our breath while we're underwater, and it's a symbol of being dead. You don't breathe when you're dead. And you don't breathe when you're underwater because it's a symbol of being buried with Christ, that you're dead. But what's the most refreshing thing when you've held your breath for a little while? You come up, take that wonderful new breath, and it's a sign of life. The thing that happened to Christ when he came out of that tomb is the first thing he did. He took a big old breath of, of life, and the Spirit of God was in him, but the breath of life was there too. And we're raised as a new person in Christ. This is about living for Christ. This is about being alive. The reality of Christ living his life in us is how we get the reality of being, of being continually with us, of him being continually with us, and us being continually with him. It's the reality of Christ living in us. Um, and may we each have the testimony of the king speaking to Daniel. And by the way, if you would read this one for me, I'd appreciate it. So the king gave the command, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke, saying to Daniel, Your God, whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Do you want to serve your God continually? Amen. Amen. Well, let's just review what this psalm said then. Uh, it said, Nevertheless, I am... Now it's your will, isn't it? It's your free choice. I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel and afterward receive me to glory. That's what we study today. Whom have I in heaven but thee? And there is none upon earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. It's my prayer that as Jesus is reaching out to us and asking us, can I take your hand? I want to hold your hand. I want to lead you. I want to guide you. I want to be your saving God. I want to be your strong hand God. 
Are you willing to reach out and accept his hand that he's holding out to you today? Amen. Amen. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, it's because you've reached out to us in our sinful condition that we can reach out to you. We thank you for what you've done for us through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And may we each die daily. May we each say, I've been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. And may this life that we live be one where we sense your presence continually, Lord. <coughs> where we walk with you and talk with you and speak for you. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 624. And that's on the screen as well. And um, Patty and I have asked that, uh, that the last verse, we're going to sing the first verse over again. At the very end, so we'll sing this through four times. You may stand. Go ahead, stand, stretch. And the last time, we're just going to sing it a um, cappella. After we'll have the benediction. Oh, and uh, I need to write for this.
you want to rekindle that fire with God and you want to recommit your life to Him, raise your hand and keep Him raised. Let God and all the angels see that you are not afraid to commit to Him. If you want to just thank God for everything that He's done for you, that you've been faithful in your walk with Him, and you want to continue to have the strength to be faithful, raise your hand high. Let God and let the angels and let your brothers and sisters here today see that you are willing to walk with them, with Him. Thank you very much. If you have decided that you want to recommit your life to Christ, please, after this service, come and talk with me. Come and talk with the other leadership here. If you want to be baptized and become part of God's family, talk to me. Talk to the other leaders here and let them know. Amen. This is an open church. God loves you, and God is glad that you're here, and so are we. Amen. Let's sing this last verse all together.